Welcome to this short recording about how to use the WashFit assessment. This tutorial is part of the training materials that accompanies the second edition of the WHO and UNICEF WashFit tool, which was launched in early 2022. The WashFit improvement cycle involves five steps, as you can see here. This presentation will focus on the second step, how to undertake an assessment of the facility. This step is arguably the most important step of the whole process, as it forms the basis of all other activities and improvements undertaken at the facility by the facility team. This tutorial will include some basic guidance about the assessment tool and how to adapt it to your own needs. We will look at the assessment tool and walk through some of the basic features. The assessment form is available in two formats. Firstly, in Excel, which we will look at today. The second is an online version using a free software called Kobo Toolbox. A separate presentation on the Kobo Toolbox version is also available. In addition, the full list of indicators is also available in the WashFit guide, and these can be copied and pasted into another format or program according to the local need. So as you can see here in the assessment form, the assessment is made up of a list of indicators. And these indicators enable a comprehensive assessment of the WASH infrastructure and services and related areas in a facility. It can be used in any size of facility, but will need to be adapted according to the facility's needs. These indicators are made up of five primary WASH domains, which you can see here at the bottom. These are water, sanitation, healthcare waste management, hand hygiene and environmental cleaning. There are two further domains which are needed to support, to support wash, wash infrastructure and practices, energy and environment and management and workforce. There are further two cross-cutting themes with indicators integrated across these seven domains, climate resilience and gender equality and inclusiveness. We're going to look now at hand hygiene as an example, because of all the domains, this has the fewest indicators. So we'll just walk through the structure of the assessment form and then explain some of these components in more detail and how you would use the form. So here on the left hand side, in the first column, you have the question number, the letter at the start refers to the domain in question. So we have H here for hand hygiene, followed by the number of the indicator. These are then further, the domains are further divided up into specific categories. So here we have availability of hand hygiene materials, hand hygiene promotion, hygiene compliance, and supplies. There are then further categories or tags for each of these indicators, which help you to select whether or not an indicator is relevant to your context. So certain indicators are classified as essential, as you see here, H1, H2 and H3 are. And that means that any facility, regardless of its size or location or type of facility, should include these indicators in the assessment form. The advanced, the advanced indicators may not be relevant in all contexts and can be included or excluded from the assessment form according to the need. You will also see that some of the indicators include this note here, so JMP basic hand hygiene, and we'll come back to what that means and why you would want to include those indicators shortly. Finally, some indicators say ward and some say ward or facility and some say neither ward or facility. Those indicators that say ward mean that you may wish to do to, to assess the indicator in more than one ward in a facility. So for example, functioning hand hygiene stations available at all points of care, including in the delivery room. In a larger facility where you have multiple wards, you may need to assess this information multiple times, and you may therefore wish to provide a score specific to an individual room. 
there's more guidance in the WashFit guide on how to use these different indicators according to ward or facility level. So please do refer to the guide there for more information. Then in column D, we have the indicators. And these indicators are based on global norms, standards, and indicators for monitoring. Columns E, F, and G are the criteria for scoring these indicators. So these are this three-point scoring system where the first column in green means that the criteria is that the facility meets the target. Yellow scoring one means that the facility partially meets the target. Or the third column red means the facility does not meet the target and will score zero. Alternative rating systems, for example, a star rating or assigning a different score may be also, also be used. In the last column here, in column I, there are explanatory notes which provide further details on the rationale behind the indicator or provide references to associated global standards, resources, relevant reading and further information. So how would you fill out the hand hygiene section of the assessment form? So for each indicator, you would be walking around the facility and assigning a score to each indicator. So as previously mentioned, the scoring is based on this three point system, scoring either zero, one or two. So you would add here into the score the, this, the number that you have assigned. Note that if you try and assign a score other than 0, 1, 2, or 3, the Excel file will not allow you to do it. Once you have filled in all of the assessments, and I'm just going to show you a sample here, let's pretend that this facility meets the standards for all of the hand hygiene related indicators. You would see that you have here, you have completed 100% of the hand hygiene domain within the assessment. And that has been calculated automatically. You also, the domain will be calculated, a score will be calculated for the domain automatically as well. And in this instance, as all of the indicators met the targets, the hygiene total score as a percentage is 100. And again, this calculates automatically. So there's a total of 10 because each indicator, each of the five indicators scored two and the number of hygiene indicators were assessed were five and this calculates this score automatically. You're encouraged to write additional comments in the, the last column to show why you have assigned a certain score to an indicator. And this is helpful for teams when you come back to look at the, the assessment form at a later stage to understand what it was, uh, what the situation was and why that particular score was given. At the top here, you see the assessment completeness and this refers to the whole wash fit assessment. So we haven't yet looked at any of the other domains but as we add indicators and assign scores to those indicators in other domains, this total percentage will go up. The WashFit assessment also allows you to calculate the JMP service levels. So the WashFit assessment includes all of the five core WHO and UNICEF global indicators for washing healthcare facilities. That is water, sanitation, hand hygiene, healthcare waste and environmental cleaning. So as you go through and assess those JMP basic indicators, the JMP level will be updated automatically. So for hand hygiene, it says that our JMP level is not yet been assessed. The reason for that is that this indicator here, S3, that all toilets have a functioning hand washing station within five meters has not yet been assessed. And that's because this indicator you need to find in the sanitation section. 
So if we assign here this indicator, all toilets have a functioning hand washing station within five meters, let's say that yes, the facility does and has met the targets. When we go back to the hand hygiene, you'll see now that the JMP level has been updated to say that it meets the basic requirements. The reason that this indicator is included under sanitation is because logically when you're walking around a facility, it makes sense to assess the hand hygiene services at the toilets when you're looking at the other elements to do with the toilets. So just a note to remember that that's why the, this indicator here is grayed out and is in brackets as S3. There are many questions from WashFit users about the difference between the WashFit indicators and the global core indicators and why you would use one for, for WashFit and the others in surveys. So the global core indicators are intended for harmonized national level assessments and monitoring and can be used to compare the conditions of wash and healthcare facilities within and between countries to track national progress over time and to combine national data to produce regional and global estimates. WashFit is more focused on qualitative analysis and progressive improvement for which objective values and comparisons both between facilities and countries are less important and for which additional indicators beyond the, the core global indicators are necessary. So WashFit indicators are scored using this three point scale in order to inspire facilities to make incremental improvements. Response, responses to the core global questions are yes, no, which allow estimations of coverage. Please refer to Annex 4 in the WashFit guide for an explanation of how WashFit indicators can be used to calculate service levels and which of the indicators and in what combinations of answers will allow you to calculate the service levels. So how many indicators are there in total and how long will it take to complete? In total, the complete assessment form has more than 90 indicators, and this may seem daunting as it may seem like the assessment will take a long time to complete. However, not all indicators are relevant for all facilities. Some may only apply in primary healthcare facilities and some only in hospitals. Some apply to specific types of infrastructure, for example, sewer systems versus non sewage system, so you can see here S8 under sanitation refers to these different types of infrastructure. And so these may not be applicable, for example, in facilities that are using simple latrines. Some may apply to the facility as a whole. For example, the availability of improved water source on premises, whereas others are assessed by specific wards and can be measured in multiple locations within a facility. Depending on the size of the facility and the number of indicators used, a full assessment can usually be completed in one to three hours. As staff become more familiar with the indicators and the process, this will become shorter over time. So how would I adapt the assessment as a WashFit user? As previously mentioned, the WashFit assessment provides the basis on which all other decisions and improvements will be made. It should therefore be fit for purpose and relevant to the local context. That means the indicators and the criteria used to score them should be adapted to reflect national standards and guidelines, the facility situation or particularly particular priority issues. The process of adapting the assessment is usually done first at the national level by the national government, perhaps with support from WHO, UNICEF and or other partners. Once a country specific version has been developed, further adaptations may be made by the facility wash fit team or local implementing partners to reflect the types of services that a facility offers. In some instances, there may already be a national or local quality improvement initiative which has a set of indicators that are being measured regularly in a healthcare facility. Indicators from WashFit could be added to the existing form 
or vice versa. More detailed guidance on how to adapt the assessment is available in Annex 3 of the main WASHFIT guide. Finally, we will just look at the summary tables in the Excel form. Going back to our previous example, where we assessed the hand hygiene services in the facility, you will see here that in the hand hygiene part of the summary table, 100% of the indicators were assessed. And the score, because we, we gave this, uh, gave the services two for each of the indicators, the score is 100%. We only filled in one indicator so far from the sanitation section. So it, it is updated here that one indicator has been assessed. And so far we've achieved 100%. But bearing in mind, this is only 100% from one indicator, and that score may change when you go on to fill out the rest of the indicators. It will also update automatically here in column I whether or not the JMP ladders have been assessed. One important point to note here is that the number of indicators of, within each domain does not update automatically. Therefore, if you add indicators or remove indicators, the number of indicators in this column will need to be updated in order to make sure that the calculations are made correctly. Once you have completed all of the assessment form and you filled in all the indicators that you decided to include, you can then look here at the bottom for this tab steps three to five. And this refers to steps three to five in the wash fit improvement cycle. So conducting a risk assessment, developing an incremental improvement plan, and monitoring, reviewing, adapting, and improving. Just for ease, I filtered out here all of the other domains. So we just are looking at the hand hygiene domain. So it brings up here our indicators H1 to H5 and has automatically updated to say what score has been assigned. The rest of this sheet in the Excel form is for more qualitative information. So here you would provide a brief description of the problem or the situation. And then the following columns get into the risk assessment. So assigning a risk score to each of the indicators and here you could would add in your improvement plan. So details of what you're going to do to improve the situation or to maintain the situation if the indicators already meet the global standards. Finally, the last few columns are for the fifth step of the wash fit cycle. So monitoring, reviewing, adapting and improving. This tutorial won't go into those in more detail, but please refer to the methodology module of within the WashFit training package for more information on how to do this. However, we hope that by including all of the different steps in one Excel file, it will be easier to monitor progress over time and keep all the information in one place. Before we finish, I just want to highlight that all of the WashFit materials are now available on the WashFit portal at www.washinhef.org forward slash washfit. At the WashFit portal, you can download other training materials, training modules, and the new training manual, as well as the WashFit guide, the assessment form in Kobo Toolbox, and you can read more about country examples of implementation. Finally, there's an opportunity for you to share your experience of using WashFit. And WHO and UNICEF would love to hear from you to know how you're using the tool and what the outcomes of this implementation has been. Finally, if you have any questions about how to use the tool, please do get in touch at washinhcf at who.int. Thank you very much for listening.